Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at what causes prop wash and a couple of ways of fixing it without doing any PID tuning. I know what you're thinking, a Chris Rosser video without PID tuning? It's not natural! But we're going to do it anyway. Let's get into it. So what causes prop wash? Well, a propeller blade and an aircraft wing are actually very similar. They're both aerofoils. And you may be aware that an aircraft wing can stall when the airflow separates from the upper wing surface. A propeller can also stall in exactly the same way. And in both cases, the effects are similar. You get a dramatic loss of lift, or in the case of a propeller, thrust, turbulence from the trailing edge of the aerofoil, and aerodynamic buffeting and vibration. So I have this video to show you what an aerofoil looks like when it stalls. Before the aerofoil stalls, you can see that the airstream remains attached to the top surface of the wing all the way to the trailing edge. And you have a very small wake from the aerofoil here. As the angle of attack increases, you reach a point where the airstream separates from the top surface of the wing. And at that point, a large separation bubble is formed, and you can see that the size of the wake of the aerofoil increases massively. That separation bubble is really unstable, and it creates a lot of turbulence and aerodynamic buffeting. It also greatly increases the drag on the aerofoil and reduces its lift. But when a propeller blade stalls on our mini quads, it creates a feedback loop. So it starts with the propeller blade stalling. And then, as you saw, we get a sudden loss of thrust from the prop. But then the flight controller realises this and rapidly increases the motor power. The propeller RPM suddenly increases, which reduces the effective angle of attack of the aerofoil. And we'll see why that is in the next slide. But that causes the propeller to unstall and the thrust to suddenly increase. Obviously, then the flight controller rapidly reduces motor power, which causes the propeller RPM to suddenly decrease, which then increases the effective angle of attack. And that leads us right back to square one. We get another propeller blade stalling and the whole process starts again. And if you look at a black box log in a prop wash situation, you can see that the flight controller is increasing power to the motor, then decreasing power to the motor, then increasing power again, then decreasing power again as it's going round and round this loop. And it's that loop that's creating that oscillation that you get in prop wash. So we've seen that aerofoils can stall when the angle of attack gets too big. But how does propeller RPM play into that? Well, the effective angle of attack is affected by a few different factors. The angle of attack gets bigger the greater the pitch of the prop. And so that means that light pitch props, low pitch props, have less issue with prop wash than steeper pitch props. But also, the effective angle of attack gets bigger the slower the prop spins in a reverse flow situation. And also, the faster the reverse flow of air through the prop. And to explain why this is, I've done these two diagrams. In normal flow, we have airflow coming down through the prop and the propeller is spinning. And you can see that that gives us a relative wind direction that looks something like this. And the exact angle of that is going to depend on the flow speed coming down through the prop and also on the propeller speed. But now consider a reverse flow situation. Maybe you're doing a hard 180 or you're descending very rapidly. Now you've got airflow coming up through the prop. And you can see immediately that the relative wind direction has changed a lot and that the angle of attack has gotten much bigger. But more than that, if we decrease the prop speed, we can see that the angle of attack increases even more. And that means that if the propeller speed drops down, the likelihood of the blade stalling gets much, much higher. And there's another factor which plays into this, which is that reverse flow through the propeller slows it down like a wind turbine. Now I have a neat little demo to show you this in action. So this is a little quad here, and you can see that this propeller would normally spin in this direction clockwise. But 
Watch what happens if I blow up through the propeller. So I'm going to create some reverse flow. And you might be able to see that the prop is actually spinning anti-clockwise. And that's because the reverse flow is driving the prop in the other direction. And that's what causes the prop to slow down so much when it's in reverse flow. Fortunately, there's a feature in Betaflight which can stop this happening. Dynamic idle can prevent the prop's RPM from dropping below a certain value, even in very, very strong reverse flow. Dynamic idle ensures that all the motors on your quad are always spinning faster than a certain minimum RPM, no matter what. If a motor slows down too much, the power to that motor is increased to maintain the minimum RPM. And it also actually allows the flight controller to request power settings lower than the idle throttle percentage which can help motors change speed faster. Without dynamic idle, when the quad wants to slow a prop down, it just sends the minimum throttle value. And this is typically 5% for a five inch. The RPM of the motor comes down and then sort of hovers around a value, but it's not being controlled. And in a reverse flow situation, the RPM of the prop can actually drop really low. With dynamic idle on, when the quad wants a motor to slow down, it can actually send zero throttle, which means that the motor slows down even more quickly. And then the RPM is being controlled. So the RPM will remain constant at the dynamic idle value and the throttle level will be modulated up and down to ensure that no matter what happens, that RPM value stays constant. And so you never get these dips into very low RPM values with dynamic idle enabled. This can really help with prop wash and low throttle authority, especially on smaller quads, and you should definitely give it a go. Now we've discussed why you should enable dynamic idle, I'm going to talk you through how to do it. The good news is if you have bi-directional D-Shot enabled, then you are ready for dynamic idle. If you haven't got bi-directional D-Shot enabled, then I'll put a link in the video description to instructions on how to get that activated. As we saw in a previous slide, propeller tip speed is the scaling law for dynamic idle. And I found that a good level for most of my quads is a tip speed of about 30 miles an hour at the dynamic idle minimum RPM. Now that gives a different RPM for different prop sizes. And so I've produced a table where you can look up your prop size and find a suitable dynamic idle setting. For steeper pitch props, you might benefit from a slightly higher value and you can go up in steps of five or 10%. Once you know what dynamic idle setting you need for a particular quad, jump into the Betaflight configurator, go into the PID tuning tab, and enter that value into this dynamic idle box here. So this is a two inch quad, so I'm gonna enter 50. Now you may find at first when you enable dynamic idle that you get a little bit of wobbling around at zero throttle. It's not the case for all quads, but some quads it can happen. If you get that, go into the configuration tab and gradually increase your motor idle throttle value percent. Go up in steps of one or 2% until that low throttle wobble disappears. Don't worry, it's quite normal to have to increase that motor idle throttle value quite a bit after enabling dynamic idle. If you want to be scientific about it, you should target a motor idle throttle percent value that gives you an idle RPM about 20% higher than your dynamic idle value with props on. But it can be a bit dangerous to do that test, particularly on larger quads. So you might find that just moving up the motor idle throttle percent gets you to the same point with a lot less risk. Let me know in the comments what you think of this information. Are you already using dynamic idle or are you excited to try it for the first time? If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos like this. If you'd like to support the work I'm doing and get access to some sneak peeks and my Discord server, then I have a Patreon and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. I'd really appreciate it if you'd check it out. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.